Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Sacred Space Podcast. My name is Gina Stockton, and I am so honored that you would join us today. My guest today is Zach Neese. Zach is an author, has been a worship pastor, care pastor at Gateway Church in Dallas. He's a mentor and pastor for other pastors and leaders and just an amazing guy. Zach and I had a really fun conversation about worship about intimate relationship with Jesus. We talked about the preparation of the church for his return and so many more things. Zach dropped some truth bombs, so I encourage you to grab a pen, grab a journal, maybe listen a couple of times. This is a super fun conversation. You can even hear my friend Louisa in the back going, woo, (laughs) every so often as we talk. But sit back, relax, Enjoy this episode of the Sacred Space Podcast. So, Zach, a guy named Zach, welcome to Sacred Space. Yes, yeah. thanks. It's good thanks to be here. for being here. We met Sunday yeah. after church, so it was so nice to meet you. It's really great to meet you. Too. And I really appreciate you taking the time. It's an honor. We were talking a little bit. We have a, com- a mutual friend She's sitting in the corner trying to be real quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Louisa. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to interview her and for her to share her story. And I know that um, you were a big part of her journey here at Gateway. So Mm -hmm. just thank you as for a daughter slash sister slash friend over there that I so love and uh, got to pour into. You were a big part of her healing and her ability to step into the things that God's placed her in right now and the authority she's been given and the anointing she has so she's easy to love (laughs) and she was easy to see in Christ Mm. and she was easy to embrace and engage in family and so it was there was no difficulty at all (laughs) in in loving Louisa so So good I kind of stalked you a little bit yesterday Uh because I knew you were going to be talking and I just googled and found some podcasts you were on and stuff so I listened to some things you also wrote a book back in 2012, How Mm -hmm. to Worship a King, Mm -hmm. which is a really incredible book. And I want to talk about a couple of things um, from that. And so there was a podcast that you were on the Worship Leader Problems podcast. Yeah. And you said, I just want, I'm going to dive dive right in, if you don't mind. You were a worship pastor here at Gateway Church, which is in Texas, is a enormous church with several campuses. And now you're a care pastor. And not just for the congregation. God opened the door. Um, See, I did listen in the last year to really pouring into worship pastors. And, you know, a lot of leadership in the last year have been faced with some gnarly things. And God has really been exposing dependence that's been in the wrong places and our kingdoms that we've built and unearthing idols that have been under our beds. And Altars that are in the corner that we decorated to look real cute, but he's yeah. going to actually know that needs to go, you yeah. know, all those things. And leaders were really faced with such division in the church and didn't know how to lead. And so God's positioned you to start pour, really pouring into some of those leaders and encouraging them and walking with them and praying for them and helping them probably. And I'm making assumptions, but I've kind of been there too. Yeah helping them see the things that maybe where their focus got off track and kind of reposition and reorient and restore like who they are, their identity and their call Mm -hmm. and the things that God has in front of them. And so, yeah, I think God's got a lot for you in the next season. Yeah. (laughs) But it was interesting. I want to, there was something you said on the podcast and Guys, if you want to go listen to it, it's Worship Leader Problems, episode 122. Um, But they asked you this question. They said, what would you say if you were in front of a room of worship staff and tech staff and everything else? And you said, like... I was like, what did I say? I know, you're like, what did (laughs) I say? This is fascinating. I I never know what's going to come out of my mouth. (laughs) Exactly. Um, but I love this. You said, I don't think we know what we're doing. Oh. I don't think we understand how it affects God. Yeah. I don't think we understand how it affects history. Yeah. I don't think we understand how it affects humanity. Yeah. If the gospel is lo- God's love demonstrated to humanity, then worship is the love of humanity demonstrated back to God. Yeah. When those two things intersect, yeah. there's a potency release that changes the atmosphere of earth 
to match heaven. Yes. If we don't understand either of those, that potency lays dormant. Mic drop. Amen. We can pray right yeah. now. I don't need to say um, anything. Dude. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, that's the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That is worth it. We talk yeah. about the kingdom of God. If, if I have... If I have worship without the gospel, I have impotent worship. Yeah. If I have gospel without worship, I have an impotent gospel. Mm, it's good. Yeah. So, and and that's where the that's where the church's realignment is coming. So, did you hear the whole um, perfume conversation? We yes, that's the next thing I wrote. Worship <laughs> is the perfuming of the bride, so the groom can come back. <laughs> see, it's right here. You can even see it. Oh. My really sloppy writing. Yes. Yeah. So I, I love to tell this story. Um, you know, I was I was newly saved when I started pursuing my now wife's heart. Mm. I didn't know what I was doing. I was I was trying to be like Jesus to her, and so for for <laughs> one of her one of her birthdays, um, I took a bunch of scriptures uh, out of the Song of Songs and and cut them out and attached to them to gifts that were associated with that scripture. Which, by the way, the Song of Songs. I'm not even sure you should read that. <laughs> <you're> right. <laughs> right. Like, mm. All right. That's that's like. Uh, uh, mm, yeah, for, mm-hmm. seriously, Christian adult. But um, I didn't know any better. So I read it, and I'm trying to find all these gifts. And one of them, I needed some perfume. I don't know anything about perfume. Everything to me just smells uh, like uh, funky flower water or something. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> so I had one of my friends come help me. And she, uh, we were in a store, and I was going around smelling perfumes. And they all smelled too alcoholy or or too much like soap or whatever. And she finds this perfume and hands it to me and says, what about this? And I popped the cap off of this stuff and I inhaled and I've never experienced anything like that before or since. Hmm. It was like, um, it was like an olfactory opiate or something. I started, <laughs> I started seeing spots. I'm serious. Uh, that's like, funny. I wasn't saved my whole life. So I, I, I know something about being inebriated, you know? <laughs> And I've never smelled anything in my life that made me feel like, ah, I, I feel like I've got a heavy buzz. It was worse than that. My knees started getting weak. No, I that's started funny. getting dizzy, you know? And and I was like, yeah, that's the stuff. So I <laughs> took that stuff. <laughs> this stuff that drives me crazy, makes me dizzy, makes me see spots, and makes my knees weak. Yeah. And I gave it to the woman who drives me crazy. Yeah. Makes me dizzy and makes my wheeze my my wheeze. My wheeze. Makes my knees weak, you know, which was probably a terrible idea because as soon as she got this perfume and she realized what it did to me, she wore it all the time. <laughs> She put it on everything. <laughs> if we got in the car to go on a date, her car smelled like this stuff. Yeah. I'd come over and, and hang out with her family. I'd spend the night. She'd give me her room, and her room smelled like that stuff. I swear she put it on her pillows and stuff. <laughs> I think she was putting it on the door frames. <laughs> like, everywhere smelled like this perfume. And she, I was already in love with her, and I was already very attracted to her, and I was already uh, being pushed in my self-control as a, mm-hmm. as a Christian man mm-hmm. with a woman that I yeah. love very much yeah. and wanted to be yeah. with, right? Right. And that's normal, right? Yeah. And then she puts this stuff on <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and, and so I had to go have a conversation with her dad and say, yeah, Mr. Cathers, I think we need to abbreviate this engagement. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go. I want my wife, you know? <laughs> and so when I realized... The Bible has has a metaphor like that. The Bible, especially in the in the tabernacle, um, the priest would burn incense on the altar of incense. And the Bible says that's the place where I'm going to meet with my priests and speak mm-hmm. to them. I speak to my priests in that place. That's the same incense that they would put in the holy of holies to prepare the atmosphere for the glory of God, yeah. so that they could crawl in under under the veil, apply the blood of the covenant um, to the mercy seat, and the glory of the Lord would show up. Yeah. Right? So incense prepares the atmosphere mm. for this move, for this, for this power, the glory of God, right? Yeah. In fact, there's, there's all kinds of references to it. I just dare you to go look into it. And then mm-hmm. end times prophecies are full yeah. of it and revelations full of it. Yeah. In fact, before the first trumpet is blown, there's an angel that fills a censer with incense and throws yeah. it to the earth. Yeah. Um, and it represents that, that, it's mixed with prayer, the Bible mm-hmm. says. It's, it's something that rises to heaven when you burn it, and yeah. it's mixed with prayer. Yeah. And I think it's worship. I don't think it's yeah. music. Yeah, no. 
but I think it's a type of worship that feels like intercession. Intercession. I think it's a type of worship that connects heaven and earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right? you know, it's interesting, too, because, I mean, okay, let's just kind of take, run with this analogy. Like, that perfume, not coupled with the reciprocal intimacy of your wife, like her love, her, her presence, something would be wrong, something would be missing, mm-hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? And so it's like that prayer, that the, the prayers, like the mixing of the incense with the prayers, yes. is that's the relational that's piece exactly of it, right. right? Yes. And I think as you're talking, one of the things that I think we wrestle with in the church, well, first of all, the word intimacy has been so hijacked by the world. There's a lot of people who are fearful of the word intimacy, like, you know, especially when you start saying intimacy with God, yeah. that, that knowing and being known. But then there's that interesting juxtaposition between how to have intimate knowing with a holy God, yeah. right? And that's what that place, that holy of holies is. It's that moment, and we I was praying earlier before we even started, and that one of my favorite moments in Revelation is when John sees Jesus in his glorified form. And on earth, John was like, oh, he's my buddy. He loves me. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're like this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know him so well. <laughs> like the familiarity was so deep that he kind of loses sight of that holiness until yeah. he sees Jesus, hair white as wool, eyes flame of fire, you know, yeah. and he fa- it says he falls as if he were dead. Yeah. But then Jesus leans down and touches his back and says, don't be afraid, yeah. you know, and it's that that crazy tension between holiness yeah. and intimate pursuit, right? It's that God walking with Adam and Eve in the cool of the garden and that, that just constant intimate exchange. And then that, to me, the most devastating verse in the Bible is when he says, where are you? Yes. When they're hiding, you know? And I don't think it was a, where are you? It was like, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> what have you done? You yeah. know, that separation that happened. Okay, sorry, I'm going off on Yeah, where'd your tangent. heart go from me? Yeah. I don't think that's a tangent because I think that's the whole point. Yeah. I mean, you know that's the whole point. That's what the gospel is about. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, Jesus didn't die on the cross so that so that we could have careers. Yeah. Jesus died on the cross so that he could bring his kingdom. He didn't die on the cross so that I could have fans. He died on the yeah. cross so that he could have family. You know, yeah. this is this is what the gospel is about. Yeah. He he wants to build his household. He wants his bride. He wants mm. his sons and daughters drawn into into relationship with him. But there's this thing about intimacy with God. That is, as soon as you get comfortable, uh, it's like I have to be reminded, as soon as I get comfortable, there's more to see. Mm, it's good, right? yeah. Because absolutely. you're talking about John who'd walked with Jesus yeah. more intimately than any human being yeah. in his life, except his mother maybe. And then saw him at the cross, the only disciple that saw him crucified, right? Mm. And, and also saw him on the Mount of Transfiguration. So he'd already seen him glorified. Yeah. And he saw him resurrected. He'd already seen all this stuff. Yeah. So he, I wonder if he was thinking, uh, I'm sure he didn't because John knew Jesus that well. But, but we get like, we've had all these revelations and we get comfortable in our, in yeah. our theology of who God is. You yeah. Know? And there's always another glory. There's always mm-hmm. another aspect of the of the infinitesimal God. Yeah. The, 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 uh, so, so he sees him again and his mind gets blown well, again. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. And it's not just a, a mind blow that's like, wow, you're amazing. It's a mind blow that's, 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 that's so has the fear of the Lord massaged into it. Yeah, yeah. That it, that it, it knocks him on his face. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, I think, where our intimacy our intimacy is broken if it doesn't have the fear of the Lord in it. Mm, it's good. And that's what God, I think in John, because yeah. he has maybe the most intimate relationship with Jesus in the Bible, he's always showing him aspects of himself that lets him know he's even more deeply loved than he understood, mm-hmm. but that Jesus is even holier than he understood. Yeah, yeah, it's And good. is more worthy of righteous fear than so he really understood. Good. And so, so he's good. growing in both of those at the same time. So yeah. that, that passage you were just talking about, the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. We, we skip the Lord part. We think yeah. that worship is love with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mm. It's love the Lord. Yeah. And if you have, and if you have, if you have affection without submission to the fear of God, that mm. he is God, he is the Lord. Yeah. And you're missing an aspect of, of worship. And that's so good. Those are like the, the parallel paths of John's, 
walk with Jesus, I think, yeah. that you're talking about. Yeah, because without that fear, you're, you're really creating God in your own image in a lot of ways, right? You start to yeah. cherry pick the things that you're comfortable with, things that you're not. And really that, and that uh, removes dependence, which is really what we're called to, the John 17, mm-hmm. you know, intimacy and that, that dependence, that father and son intimacy is the message calls it, in the John 17, that Jesus is trying to demonstrate in his life, right? And then we, we pull back and then we start becoming religious. We start coming into, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. And then the, then we start judging one another. Well, you're not doing it enough mm-hmm. or right. Or I start judging myself because I don't see the fruit that I see in somebody else's life, right? Mm-hmm. There's no grace for the stages of uh, spiritual and relational growth. There's mm-hmm. no grace for stages of faith. And um, we lose sight of that altogether when mm-hmm. we lose that fear, right? Mm-hmm. It's really, really crazy. I agree. So that incense thing, right? This is part of my problem with the whole worship movement right now. Mm-hmm. is that we're, we're kind of in love with the romantic aspect and we're in love with the musical aspects of worship. But I, I don't think we realize, that's what you were just reading at the beginning, I don't think we realize the historic ball we set rolling mm-hmm. when we worship Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a revival watcher, you know, mm-hmm. like a bird watcher or something. Yeah. You know? I'm always interested in what Jesus is doing, and I'm always ge- interested in what he's done in the past and, and where that's moved us, because I don't think he ever keeps us stationary like, like yeah. you were talking about, because we grow in intimacy and, and we, we grow in an understanding of his glory, and, and his glory grows on the earth. So I feel like we've been in the middle of and not been aware of we've been in the middle of the greatest worship revival in the history mm-hmm. of the world mm-hmm. there's this has never been a time in history when there's been so much availability mm-hmm. of worship content and vehicles and music you can you can go to conferences for it you can you can stream it download it purchase it play it on your radio in the car and it's just like my wife taking that perfume and she's got it in her car she's got it in her bedroom she's putting yeah, it on yeah. door frames we have worship going on everywhere we have worship in more buildings than we've ever had it in America in yeah. the history of our nation yeah. a- and we don't even realize that what we're doing to Christ what if what we're doing to Christ is kind of like what my wife was doing to me what if the Lord is is bending down low and in inhaling the fragrance of this incense, this perfume that's coming up. And what if, what if this drives the heart of Jesus Christ crazy? (laughs) And what if he's setting up a meeting with his father at this very moment going, dad, we're going to have to abbreviate this engagement (laughs) because I want my bride. Hmm. And I think every time you see this incense in the Bible, it's before the glory. Hmm. Yeah. And if we're in the middle of a moment like this, it's because the father is perfuming the, the bride for the coming of his son. Mm-hmm. That's what I think is happening mm, right now. That's good. I think that the bride is being perfumed. Mm-hmm. And the reason is to stir the son to come back. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I think that, I think the last year and a half has been a purification of that perfume. I would of agree that offering. With that. I would agree. I think that, the bride, especially in America, but worldwide, because we've been in a pandemic and we things got shut down and, and everything. God, in his love for the preparation so that our lamp is full mm-hmm. and not half empty, mm-hmm. is sending a grand disruption mm-hmm. to reseat and reorient us so that the object of our affection is firmly planted in front of us. Well said. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because here's here's a problem. So uh, when I was in high school, I was dating this girl. I thought she was in love with me, but then I noticed that she would respond to anybody who flirted with me. I mean, mm. with her. Yeah. So the pro- she didn't love me. She just loved love. She just she just loved yes. love. Mm-hmm. And I think <laughs> I think we've had a one of the areas that we've strayed in this whole movement is we've we've created fans of worship. Yeah. Like people who love, they don't love Jesus, they love worship. Right. That is not the same thing. Yeah. 
it, it is it's time right now to fall in love with the groom who's coming mm, back, and yeah. he, that's who he's coming back for. He's so coming good. back for a bride who is who is passionately head over heels, sold out yeah. for him and his coming and yeah, his presence, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Not for, not a fan of a certain brand mm-hmm. of worship or music or a, or a denomination. All that stuff needs to be cleansed off. You're talking about yeah. purification. All yeah. that stuff needs to be washed away. And you know what? I, I love that you said that you're like a Reformation or a Revival watcher because I think that we decide what our definition of revival is, right? right? And so we're like, oh, revival come. And we have this imagined image that's going to be stadiums filled with people and, and you know, yeah. Hillsong worship or whatever they flavor they like at the day, that's going to be revival. Yeah. But revival is a conversation with the woman at the well and be her being seen for the first time, being loved and accepted for the first time, and her running to her town and going... <gasps> Her repenting, repentance, not a bad word. It's actually an invitation. Amazing word. It's a gift. Yeah. It's beautiful. And then her running and spreading that word in an entire town, longing and desperate for the thing that she discovered, right? Yes. And, and I think that, that God is going to redefine revival for us as we step into this grand reorientation, right? Yes. Crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's, man... <laughs> So, you know, Luis is sitting over here. We're, we're at this little campus, North Fort Worth. Uh, I was there for seven years and, and saw what I would say is revival. Mm-hmm. There was not a fire shooting through the roof. Yeah. But we started in a school that, that the year we began meeting in that school was the worst school in the school district. Mm-hmm. And over the course of a school year, became the best school in the school oh, district wow. with less crime, no mm-hmm. teen pregnancy, no drugs. They didn't need any police presence, but they needed all of those things before. And when the administrators were asked, what happened? They said, all we can think is there's a church meeting in our school. Wow. And it changed the school, which changes the kids, which changes the wow. families, right? That's revival. That school had yeah. revival. We, we baptized 600 people one weekend. That's revival. There's no yeah. fire shooting through the yeah. ceiling. If, if, if God wants to send fire through the ceiling, I'm a big fan of fire through the ceiling. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah, amazing. yeah. I want, to, I want to see all that cool stuff too. But what I really want is what the Father wants. Yeah. The Father wants his sons and daughters, and he's, yes. he is not willing, uh, he's not willing to compromise on that. Yeah. It's good. He's not, he's not willing to build my career to compromise his kids. He won't do it. Yes. Ooh, that's good. So good. Dude, that'll preach. (laughs) (laughs) Need a mic. Give me a mic. Right? (laughs) I want to drop it right now. No. Um, So good. So good. There was something that you said actually early in the book, so I'm going to kind of pull us back from that yeah. place. I think we can like park that and let people <laughs> maybe pause, spend a little time with Jesus Just and process. Do a little salam. Uh, yeah, exactly. The very beginning of your book, you talk about who we are, identity, mm-hmm. role, purpose, mm-hmm. those kinds of things. And you ask a question, you say, do you want to be used by God? <laughs> And then your response to that question, mm-hmm. can you talk a little bit about that? Because I, I loved that. And I think, yeah. you know, 90% of believers in the Western Evangelical Church are like, I want to be used by the Lord. I know. Yeah. You know, and I just love that you turn that on its ear. Yeah. So can you just talk through that just briefly? Yeah, sure. Um, Boy, that, that, that was a challenge to me because cause I was the guy that was walking around praying, God, I want to be your sword. Like, use me to snicker snack the enemy, you know? Mm-hmm. I want to I wanna be your favorite hammer. Anytime you need to, to build something, pull, I, wanna, I want you to pull me out and, and use me to do that thing. And, and I, I, the Holy Spirit just confronted me mm-hmm. one time, you know? I don't, I don't want to use you. I want to know you. Yeah. That, that the, Jesus didn't die on the cross so that, so that his father could come use me. Mm. Jesus died on the cross because I have a father who's always wanted to know me. Mm. He wants intimacy with me. So good. And, he, and he, here's our humanity, okay? We think we're praying a good thing. And I don't have any judgment if somebody wants to yeah. pray something like that. I know yeah. your heart. You, you, want, you want to be about your father's business, which is amazing. Yeah. I want to be about my father's business too. But in the, 
But in the praying for that and in the thinking of that, we begin to identify ourselves not as children who are precious to God, but as tools that are utilitarian in yeah, our purpose. Yeah, so good. And when a tool is not useful, you, you put it aside for another tool. Yep. Tools are disposable. Yep. If the tool doesn't function the way it's supposed to function for the job it was created for, you get a new tool. Mm. And God will never use you that way. Mm. Things that are useful are also disposable. Dude. God is not going to dispose of you. He wants to know you. In fact, God used Pharaoh, but he knew Moses. Mm. God will use his enemies. He'll use donkeys. He'll use yeah, natural right? disasters. That's so good. But he wants to walk with his kids. You know, He wants Dude, to know them. I kind of want to do a whole other podcast with you about church leadership and that. <laughs> Oh, I would love to talk about that. <laughs> Dude, like, okay, that's a whole nother. But this talk, is, but yeah, this is, good. The, this is the sin of church leadership. Yeah, people use people, but God doesn't use people. That's right. And I've yeah. done it. And the thing is that, we all have. that God will give us a vision, and we think that God brings us people to serve the vision. God will never bring you people to serve a vision. God will give you vision to serve his people. Ah. Boom. So if you're if you're around, put that on a sign and sell it at Hobby Lobby. Yeah. <laughs> so and I don't say that so we can judge our leaders. I say that yeah, as no. leaders so that we can judge ourselves. Yes, yes. It's not. It, it, please, none of this is accusation. No. This is, this is this is if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. This it has to start with me, right? Yeah. It has to start with me. Um, being willing to, you know, the end of Psalm 139 that says, search me, oh God, know my heart, try me mm. and see if there's any wicked way in me. And that word wicked translate, one of the translations of that word wicked is idle. You know, oh, dang, yeah. you know, because we can sit here and we can find wicked as something really dark. Oh, I'm not wicked. I don't do that. I don't think those things or whatever. But when you translate it to idle, then suddenly there's something that is in that it's a high thing mm-hmm. that I've set above the knowledge of God, right? Mm-hmm. So I can't take those thoughts captive now because I'm, I've got a stronghold that I'm, I have a common agreement with, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Crazy, crazy. So, well, and so, so this is Paul, you know, I, I think it was a Corinthians. He said, I've determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him mm-hmm. crucified, mm-hmm. you know? I want to know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship yeah. of his suffering, somehow mm-hmm. becoming like him. This, this is Paul's pursuit, yeah. is, to be, is to be known and to know, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. if, if this is intimacy, to know and to be known. Yeah. So we, we get all these other, like, romantic notions and culture has tried to define it, but if you just break it down to what it is, is mm-hmm. to know and to be known. Yeah, so good. And, we, and that is, that's the desire of every heart is to know and to be known. And in the absence of being known, we'll settle for being noticed, mm. which is what is going on in our culture right now. We have a whole culture of people who are, who are uh, fighting, clawing, barking, posting to be yeah. noticed because they so long to be known. Yeah. And this is what Christ wants to do with mm. us. And so if I'm known and, and I know him and he knows me, then of course I'll be of use because I'm going to yeah. be walking in intimacy with him and right. he's going to pour himself through me in whatever right. way he wants to. And that's where transformation happens, right? Because I think that's the other trap we fall into as believers is we try to go behavior first, relationship after. It's a workspace thing, right? So if I, if I do good enough, then I will be able to... It's, it's, it's the prodigal son wanting to wash dishes, yeah. right? But if we are willing to accept the invitation to come close mm-hmm. and know him and be dependent on him and receive from him, then all of those things are going to fall into place, right? Mm-hmm. Which is mm-hmm. crazy. And, that, you know, that's the grand lie. I think that's, you know, we talk about just we don't want to be deceived. You know, oh, we don't want to be deceived. And so we look at all, looking for the devil under the corners and all the evil that he's going to do. And we point fingers at each other all the while. Um, we're just kind of getting lulled into this kind of works-based religious system that removes relationship altogether. Right? Yeah. Crazy. Isn't that sad? It's so sad. And I mean, we... That's antichrist. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. It is. It is. That's antichrist. Wow. We're, we're, we're looking for this antichrist to rise up, you mm-hmm. know? We're looking for this beast who has too many horns sticking out of his head or something. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and we read uh, the Book of Revelation, expecting this this one world government. And I'm, eschatology, fine, whatever. I I want Jesus to come back too, but you don't have to look very far to find Antichrist. You can just yeah. you just look in our own religion. Yeah, it's so good. Antichrist is is what is what you're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. It says that that I have to 
I have to figure out how to get enough brownie points to get into his good graces, mm-hmm. you know. And if I and if I just work hard enough, then he's gonna like me. Yeah. That's antichrist. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Dude, thank you. Thank you for this conversation, for being here, for taking the time. Thank you for for not settling, for digging deep, for looking for the uncomfortable things, for uh, being willing to hear the hard things, and then for your obedience to speak them when he says to speak. And... Um, yeah, God bless you and your ministry and the things that God has in front of you and all that you're doing, your family and everything. Thanks Thank for being you. here. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jan. And may God bless you and everything that you lay your hands to and your family and your ministry. And thank you for asking hard questions and making me answer them. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. It's great to be with you. Before you go on with your day, I want to sit with a couple of things. We're not going to sit with all of it. There's not enough time, but I do encourage you to go back and write down the things that hit you. Maybe the things that triggered you. What is the Lord stirring in you? What convicted you, maybe offended you, excited you, and go before him with those things and listen. He's going to talk. He's going to reveal himself to you in the heart of the Father. But I want to focus on two things that Zach said that I think are really important for us as believers right now. The first is Our intimacy is broken if it doesn't have the fear of the Lord in it. Our intimacy is broken if it doesn't have the fear of the Lord in it. And if you have affection without submission, then you're missing something. What does it mean to have intimate relationship with a holy God. To have appropriate awe and fear of a God who created the universe, who knit me together, who holds the keys to sin and death. How do I have affection and submit myself in holy awe to the one who sees me and knows me and loves me. So Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We invite you to reveal those places in our heart where we have not brought holy reverence and awe of you. Lord, reveal those places in our heart that we are not in submission to you, where we've forgotten to have holy fear, to fall before you, humbled by your majesty, overwhelmed by your grace. Purify us, cleanse us afresh, fill us afresh with your spirit and give us eyes to see you on the throne, your glory filling the temple. Lord, let our gospel not be powerless. Let our worship not be impotent, Father. We want to stand fully and completely in our identity, trusting you, glorifying you, surrender to you. Transform us, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. I 
hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sacred Space Podcast. And if you want to check out Zach's book, How to Worship a King, I really encourage you to do so. There'll be a link in the episode notes. You can find it on Amazon. I'm also going to have it available through StocktonMinistries.com. Also, he has a website, ZachNeese.com. You can check him out there as well. If you'd like to support the production of this podcast and other projects like the Dwell Project from Stockton Ministries, you can click the link in the episode notes or go to our website, StocktonMinistries.com, and click the donate button in the top right-hand corner. And if you're interested in getting to the Dwell Meditations, they are available on all streaming platforms. You can go to our website. We have links to iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music and Amazon as well. They're all on Pandora and all the other streaming uh, platforms as well. So don't miss out because those are a great tool just to get some intentional time with Jesus. I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week, and that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved. Have a great week.